where you're going to see most of your exam questions in regard to toxic metabolism is with acetaminophen toxicity. So here's a picture I took of the side of a acetaminophen or a Tylenol bottle. It's called Tylenol Cold. And the question here is, is why are we getting this warning? And this is the warning that I am referring to. It says, if you consume three or more alcoholic drinks every day, ask your doctor whether you should take acetaminophen or other pain relievers or fever reducers. Now, this line is essentially crap. What we care about is this line right here, whether or not we should take acetaminophen. So you might be thinking, well, if you're a chronic alcoholic, you might be inducing the P450 enzymes. And therefore, the levels of acetaminophen in your body would be decreasing and this pain medication wouldn't work. And that is probably correct to some degree, but that's not the answer. What's happening is we're inducing P450 and therefore we're going to make more toxic metabolites of acetaminophen. So this leads to toxic metabolites. And that is the problem. So let's start with just a little background information on acetaminophen. It is the most widely used analgesic and antipyretic in the United States, a pain reliever and a fever reducer. And it is an over-the-counter medication, so it is very safe if used in therapeutic ranges. But at the same time, it is the number one cause of acute liver failure in the United States. And part of this could be people are knowingly overdosing on acetaminophen, but the other reason is that they put acetaminophen in many drugs, then it's not always very clear that it has Tylenol in it. So here's an example of you know, Tylenol cold. It has the phenylephrine, but acetaminophen is mixed into it. You see acetaminophen in a lot of pain medications, a lot of cold medications, and so patients can unknowingly, trying to treat some of their symptoms, take a lot more acetaminophen than they anticipated. And so what we're interested in in this lecture is, one, acetaminophen toxicity, but two, how chronic alcoholism or, you know, can lead to some of this toxicity. And so we'll look at P450 induction and how something called depleted glutathione play a major role in this toxicity. So the pathogenesis here. The first point we need to understand is that, by nature, acetaminophen is not, does not form toxic metabolites. About 95% of it, 95% here, is conjugated by phase two enzymes to non-toxic forms, so glucuronide or sulfate. So acetaminophen sulfate is non-toxic, it doesn't cause a problem. But about 5% of acetaminophen, this is number two here, is metabolized by P450 enzymes into a reactive toxic intermediate and that's this guy right here. And so this toxic intermediate, you actually should know the name for it. Uh, it has an abbreviation, N-A-P-Q-I. And looking over to the left here, this is N-acetyl-P-benzoquinonamine. And so having this, uh, the, the formation of N-A-P-Q-I is really what is causing problems. Now, this is where alcoholism fits in. If we are inducing these P450 enzymes, this is the chronic alcoholic ETOH user, or if they're using other P450 enzyme inducers, we are going to form more of this NAPQI, and this is what is toxic. So this next point I'm gonna make here is, we make this toxic compound in a non-alcoholic or in a small overdose all of this toxic compound can be conjugated to glutathione, which is GSH. This is glutathione. Into a non-toxic conjugate, and we can get rid of it. But if these glutathione stores are depleted in a repeated overdose, or if they are overwhelmed in the setting of P450 induction from chronic alcoholism or a very large overdose, then this NAPQI will bind to sulfhydryl groups on hep hepatic cells. So let's write here, sulfhydryl groups. And when it binds to this, this eventually leads to cell death. So by knowing this, we can help 
provide an antidote in the setting of a large overdose or a repeated overdose. If we give N-acetylcysteine, well this acts as a sulfhydryl group donor. It binds to this NAPQI so that it doesn't bind to these proteins and thus it forms a non-toxic metabolite that we can get rid of. So the reason we can't just give GSH is because it can't get into the cells very well. Now I want to make a quick point here. Looking into some of this data, liver disease itself does not cause uh, hepatic cell death, does not increase your risk, I should say it like this, liver disease itself does not increase your risk for hepatic cell death due to acetaminophen. And the reason here is, is that with liver disease you're also going to have less P450 enzymes and therefore you're going to make less of this NAPQI. The real issue here is with depleted GSH. So when people are taking acetaminophen in multiple forms and not realizing it. Now, all of these points here are incredibly high yield. And before we go here, I want to point out some of these clinical signs of liver toxicity after an overdose. And the reason you should know these is that in an exam prompt, these are going to be some of the things that are going to make you say, ding, 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 there is liver toxicity here for a patient who's taken a bunch of acetaminophen. The first point I want to make is, unless it's a very large overdose, you don't see these signs of liver toxicity immediately. It's going to take one to two days for these signs to become apparent, and this is because we, uh, during this time, the glutathione stores are being depleted. Once those stores are depleted, we start seeing right upper quadrant tenderness. This is where the liver is, right? We'll see elevated liver enzymes. These cells are dying and releasing the AST and ALT. And then we'll also see jaundice because the liver is not able to get rid of the bilirubin, the bilirubin in the body. And so that will have, they might say it as jaundice or a change in the skin color. So this is acetaminophen toxicity, an incredibly high yield and important topic.